On Thursday the 26th of June, two of our valued students from Woodville High School, two young Vietnamese boys, students, friends and classmates, were taken away from their community detention homes with no prior warning. Suddenly, stripped from their freedom. They were taken to the Inverraki detention center in, in the Adelaide Hills. Then shortly after, flown 3,000 kilometers away from friends, teachers and safety. To Wickham Detention Center in Darwin. They had done nothing wrong. They had been given no prior warning. Their friends and their teachers did not even have a chance to say goodbye. This is what we are doing. This is how we are helping. This is when we get our boys back. This is too, too many. Too, too many. Too, too many. Too, too many. Oh, it just seems such a long time ago. But, um, two young Vietnamese uh, boys, um, one in year, 10, one in year 11, left school. Um, they went home like every other student um, and they went to their care home as community detention students with a group called Life Without Barriers. Now there's an irony, Life Without Barriers. They didn't realise then uh, that at four o'clock, while they were still in school uniform and um, playing Xbox, they, uh, there was a knock on the door. The knock on the door was from four adult males, uh, two from the Department of Immigration and Border Protection and two from the Federal Police. Uh, they were really good kids. They were respected by the community, by their friends, their peers, you know, all the teachers so that they had really good grades and almost perfect attendance. Um, you know, they were no different from you and me, really. But they were a part of our school, our family and our friends. And from my personal, uh, because I'm one of year 11 friends, so I'm one of their friends, that's why it's really emotional for me that I lost my friend, like two of them went to the detention centre in Darwin. They've been here for one year, one of them has been here for a year, and the other one it just started this early this year. And um, they're really good students from our school, they were really academically gifted, didn't really have any um, troubles or any issues with them. One of them in year 11, like we've been studying together since like secondary, secondary school for English together when we first arrived here. And we start like with our personal experience on it and we share food together and especially he helped me in math and he's really good in math. Just look at the question and he knows the answer. The aim of the campaign is to bring back our two boys home, but our goals have reached further than we have ever dreamed before. We are hoping to change the laws to change their minds and to change ourselves in the process. Our mission statement uh, says that we are now aiming for the bigger picture um, to start enforcing uh, through legislation, you know, uh, laws concerning refugee rights and especially, you know, underage refugees, uh, treating them with respect and dignity at all times, you know, because obviously this is a situation where they have been treated completely unfairly and without dignity and respect. During Youth Parliament, we got a chance to do an uh, adjournment speech. So we decided to do a speech on the boys. So the Youth Parliament team uh, was made up of myself, uh, a girl who wishes to remain unnamed, um, Kevin Wathnuck, Narity, and people. <laughs> um, the Woodville Youth Parliament team went to Youth Parliament uh, and, you know, we wrote speeches, we did debates, we talked about bills, we met a lot of great people there. Uh, a couple of people from our team decided to do a speech on what was a relatively new situation at the time, that being uh, the two boys in the detention centre. And I spoke because uh, one of the girls that was speaking uh, got very emotional and so I pretty much stood up and, and spoke from there on, even though I didn't you know, personally know the, about the campaign and what had happened at that point. Um, and the feedback that we got from that was so overwhelming. Like these were people that we already knew that we'd been around for a week or so then. Um, 
and the amount of people that we got coming up to us, you know, talking to us about how they wanted to get us on their radio stations and then local newspapers and all that kind of stuff. They were giving us their contacts, their friends' contacts, that kind of stuff. And the support we got from everyone was amazing because, like, everyone came up to give us hugs and um, say that they were behind us. They told us about um, radios that they could get us to talk to and everything else and it was really really amazing to see so many young people say hey yeah this is the issue that we want to focus on you know this is what we are interested in you know and there were 20 other people that spoke about their issues and their personal lives and what they wanted to see change for but this has happened to be the one that everyone focused on and that just really warmed our hearts those two students need our help so why aren't we allowing them to get any with my mate my friend plan to make an online petition on Chain.org and ask for all of your help to spread the word around the stage, across the stage, to help us to Vietnamese students, yeah. not just only them, but all asylum seekers, all refugees that need our help. Yeah. Think yeah. about our future, think from young people that need our help. We are in a democracy country, it's not communist culture, help them with this hope. Please join with us in this petition. We need all of you. Our petition began the day after Youth Parliament 2014. We have over 13,000 signatures and we are hoping to achieve over 30,000 signatures. On the 2nd of August, we held a rally with over 100 participants with speakers such as MPs. Two student speakers from our school, Watnack and Kyle. They spoke uh, as students, as student leaders. What have they done wrong? Read out the word, and we are begging to all decision makers, everyone here, to bring our two Vietnamese students back to the city of Atlanta. Bring them back to Woodville High School. Thank you. They didn't just take away two boys that day, they took away a part of me as well. And to this day, it still hurts to hear the same story over and over again. It is in the public interest that our friends are able to have a safe, healthy and happy life. It is in the public interest to treat every member of the public fairly, with dignity and respect, no matter where they came from. There is a hole in the community where these kids once were and we are begging for them to be returned to their friends, peers and loving, obviously, community. This right here is democracy in action. This is unity. Can everyone, if you can hear me, can you please lift your fist in the air for me? Lift your fist in the air for me. This is solidarity. Look to the person to your left and look to the person to your right and know that you will fight for them as much as you fight for these two kids. This is democracy in action. Together, no cage can hold us. Together, no chains can stop us. Together, no one can ignore us. Together, we can grasp our dreams and bring them home. Because together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are strong. And together, we are the future. Our, the suitcase of dreams is our symbol of hope and motivation. They help us gained confidence that what, what we are doing is right and we will not stop until that suitcase of dreams becomes everyone's suitcases. Um, that was a direct quote from um, Hugh Van Lee's speech. Um, he, he's also an asylum seeker, well was an asylum seeker, and he came here by boat and he, in his, one of his speeches, I attended one of the conferences and he, one of the speeches said um, that he only came here with a suitcase of dreams. So it's really metaphorically and just amazing, just love it. <laughs> so uh, we decided to use that um, quote from Hugh Van Lee. A couple of our vet students created wooden um, suitcases and they spray painted a suitcase of dreams on it, which is really good, really good. 
and we get a lot of support from youth department, people from public, and especially covered by all the media. I believe the support and media coverage has been marvellous. We've received support and media coverage from nearly every single person in Australia and every news channel in Australia, as well as newspapers, radios and social media. Woodville High students fighting to have two asylum seeker classmates return to their school are taking the battle to Canberra. There are serious concerns for the welfare of two Woodville High students who have been detained by immigration officials. Recently, two teenage asylum seekers from Vietnam were unexpectedly taken from their homes in Adelaide and sent to a detention centre in Darwin. Tonight, two students at an Australian high school disappear at the hands of our government. Now their community wants answers. Obviously, it's very overwhelming, you know, for us 16, 17 year olds basically to just be bombarded by, you know, people asking questions. For just as an example, like the first, uh, the first uh, newspaper interview that we did, I was absolutely terrified. I had no idea what I was doing. And if it weren't for, you know, the people who are from Youth Parliament, like like um, Cam and Ali and, and Harley um, backing us up, you know, we wouldn't be where we are right now. And it's really heartwarming to see them supporting us when they don't necessarily have experience with this either. Um, but, you know, they have the knowledge to back it up. And then getting so much media coverage uh, is just really amazing like newspapers that you read every day that you know you see other people's stories and but you never see you know what you are really interested in for instance we got covered by um vice australia i love vice you know i watch their videos online all the time i was thinking about it today while walking to school you know we got covered by those guys we got covered by the project you know these are mainstream channels of communication and we've been you know accepted by all of them this 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 issue that usually would be thrown by the wayside has been, you know, accepted with open arms and everyone's willing to help and it's really beautiful. They didn't realise then uh, that at four o'clock, while they were still in school uniform and um, playing Xbox, they, uh, there was a knock on the door. Now, we often talk about oh, the knock on the door as though that's something that really happens in our lives, but it certainly happened in their lives. The knock on the door was from four adult males, uh, two from the Department of Immigration and Border Protection and two from the Federal Police. They were handed um, a letter each and a black plastic garbage bag. They were told to put their belongings into the bags and that they would be taken back into closed detention these boys had had the relative freedom of living in community detention, joining football clubs and attending Woodville High School. Apparently burst into tears. It was his worst nightmare. He sat rocking at the table and said, what have we done wrong? Because they clearly knew what the rules were for community detention. One of the people said, you've done nothing wrong. This is what the Minister for Immigration wants. He, in his distress, left the um, letter on the table and I've since seen a copy of that letter. And it said, and it was, ha it was a type letter, but the date was handwritten as if it was a quick decision to get a soft target, two soft targets. Um, and it said, the Minister for Immigration and Border Protection no longer believes it's in the quote unquote public interest for you to um, reside in the community. I don't know whose public interest they were describing, but it was certainly in the interest of, of a public high school, Woodville High School, for them to be here and remain in our learning and care. Both boys, and this is where it's the whole nature of their treatment that has distresses um, so many of their teachers and certainly me. They were taken in two separate cars to um, Inverbrackey Detention Centre in the Adelaide Hills. I can only imagine the distress and the confusion that they would have been feeling. One of our Vietnamese teachers, um, Ms Kim Dao, um, was really distressed and someone said, can you please go and see Kim? Um, and she had sent messages, but I was in a meeting and she told me what had happened. Um, we've had to piece together all of this. Um, and uh, it is quite chilling. I, I, it's not a country that I recognise that I was brought up in. 
but even gets worse. At 3 a.m. the next morning, they were awoken by four Serco guards each. So that's eight large men, two slender Vietnamese 16-year-olds. They were circled so that they couldn't run away. Once again, they were put in two separate cars. We're talking about half past three in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning, and they were taken to Adelaide Airport. They went, both went on two separate flights to Darwin, one via Sydney and one via Melbourne. Each young 16-year-old, proud young boy had a circo guard either side and two circo guards behind. The, the humiliation and shame of people who just the day before were sitting alongside their fellow students. When had to go to the toilet, now I imagine closing a toilet door on a commercial flight so you don't feel embarrassed and trying to sort through you know, your thoughts about what, what was happening in your life. And there was a bang on the door really loudly, hurry up, get out. Now you imagine, this isn't a government flight, this is a public flight, a commercial flight with Qantas. That when they got to Darwin on their separate flights, they were both transferred to Wickham uh, Point Detention Centre. It's really interesting that um, the dehumanisation of the whole process, often uh, apparently in detention centres, they're known um, by their boat number. Um, often when um, people in closed detention uh, have to go and get their meals served to them, they don't, they're not asked for their name, they're asked for their boat number. And um, I guess I worry about what that means for people developing relationships and their own self-esteem. We weren't, the school wasn't informed. Um, the education, the Department for Education and Child Development weren't informed of this. I have still got um, and on our um, books because as far as I'm concerned, they are still students at Woodville High School, both in spirit and this is where they wanted to be. In relation to me personally, they were, they were fellow students of Woodville High School. They were peers that we, you know, they were around. In, 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 a, in a school with 1,000 kids, you know, you don't notice everyone. Uh, and I never spoke to them personally, but, you know, they were my friends, good friends, you know. I, I, I am in close relation with people who knew them and were friends with them and hung out with them a lot, you know. He uh, hung out with me a lot and I went, you know, went out with him to see how he's doing. He was really, really friendly and just really a pleasure to have around school. And especially we have each other, we share our food, we share our lunch. But on the 26th of June, after I heard about this news, I was really upset about this because we never think that this happened to our friend, especially to one that you share your lunch together. They were a part of my family. And the fact that they've been taken is unforgivable. To take someone's family away is a crime. I, I, feel if, I feel that in many ways I've failed them in that I didn't know that they were the most, some of the most vulnerable students. Woodville High School prides itself on, you know, looking after student well-being. And these, I had no idea that they were actually living in fear of this happening ever since October of last year. I was 16 years old, you know, loved playing Xbox, they were on a soccer team with their friends, you know, there wasn't anything unusual about them apart from the fact that they weren't born here and is that so uncommon these days, you know, is that a reason to um, discriminate against people? I don't think so, you know, and obviously the public doesn't think so, you know, with the outcry that we've gotten recently, it's, it's really amazing to see how much support we've gotten from everyone. And, um, we also had Nui Pizzo, a past scholar, and also Kyle Rigney um, sing our um, anthem for this campaign, if you could call it. So, um, Bring Them Home was a song produced by Jacob Tengdall, um, a teacher at our school. Um, and it was sung by Kyle Rigney and a past scholar, Nui Pizzo. I am the mouthpiece for the youth. I am, I am a young leader just in search of the truth. Imagine crossing deadly seas cause you're on the run. Asylum seeking all the way from Vietnam. You find a place and you're calling it Australia. Your new home and you're happy to be staying here. Uh, but in the blink so of the I'm a, I am a former Woodville High School student. I was the captain here. I'm currently a rap artist and a former law student. 
Uh, once again, my name is Kyle Rigney. I'm a student at Woodville High School. Um, I've been a music student here for about four years now. Um, I'm, I've been heavily involved in the campaign pretty much right from the start. Uh, I'm also the person who created the online petition. They came today. I plan to help by using my voice as a recording artist and a rap artist. I have a large following online and a very large following in Adelaide and a very good following in Sydney as well. So when I speak up, there are people out there who are listening. So that is how I plan to contribute. Um, I have already personally created an online petition with the, you know, with the help of um, the team that we have behind us uh, for the Too Too Many campaign. Um, I have also helped co-write this song. Um, I feel like we could definitely make a huge influence, you know, if we all stuck together. Me playing my part is just one small part, but I feel like I've, I've, I've contributed well so far and I don't want to stop here because we don't want to stop here. I felt inclined to lend my voice as a rap artist and a young leader in the community after hearing about the two students who were detained because I feel that it's a great injustice what has happened and it affected me dearly because I also have a background like a migrant background and not only does it affect me because of that but I attended Woodville High School as well so this is something that's very dear to me. I felt like as a musician um, I had enough power within me to create something that would be uh, more easily um, put into the media, you know. Um, there are a lot of different forms of media out there and I think that um, song, song and music is definitely a very influential way of spreading your message across. I believe the song is very motivational and inspirational as it inspires others to join and support our cause. It's very descriptive of our actions. It's just really expressing, well, to the singer's point of view, their um, feelings and how they feel about the whole situation. And it's just really good to have that in song so that, you know, gets people's heads and hopefully. <laughs> so the rap song that I wrote is basically targeted to the public just spreading awareness about what has happened and actually trying to reach out to the government and the forces that be to let them know that we won't stand and let this happen. Not on our watch, we've had enough and we'd like the boys to come back home. What's right? Because we have the power, the future is ours, the shout till our voices are gone. Bring them home, bring them home, bring them home. The rap song was uh, created by um, Neo Pizza and I, um, with backing tracks by uh, Jacob Tendall, a teacher at the school. Um, in the chorus, I sort of put together, with the help of my partner, um, sort of just signalling the fact that these boys are not alone and we need to understand that you know, not everything works in our favour, but we can do things to change the way that, like, the world that we live in, and that's what we're trying to do. I don't have a favourite line in the rap. I think all of it as it is, it's it's just, it, it can't be taken line for line. I think that every line that I chose was specific for a reason. Uh, my favourite line from the song, uh, once again, I like Neo, I don't really have a favourite line, but, um, the chorus, uh, there's a line in it that says, uh, you know you have a place to go, you know you have a place to call your home. That's really, that's really a powerful statement in that, you know, some people don't have homes to go to, you know, so people come here and seek refuge and seek a home to live in, you know, seek somewhere to sleep even, somewhere to, to be able to eat. And the fact that uh, we as a public almost are denying them those rights, you know, we've, we've now stood up and said, no, that's not okay. So I really like that line.
A few weeks ago, Watnak and I, we, were, um, we presented a speech, a deputation speech to the City of Charleston members and councillors. And our deputation was passed through the City of Charleston by setting against one, and it's really helpful for us. And also we have a lot of support from the Mayor. And we got an overwhelming amount of support from them, and that was probably the first official step that we took as a school community to really, you know, follow up this issue. After hearing of the removal of the two boys, the community de detention students are now frightened to the point where they do not wish to step outside their homes. As a result of what we have learned in the last month, we believe that the claims we believe that claims for asylum should be treated fairly, promptly, and in a manner which enhances the dignity of the Charles Sturt residents and the wider community. And can you imagine if one of your friends, one of your family member, or your children? were taken away without saying goodbye to them. How does it feel? Can you imagine? And if you need detention center far away from your friend, far away from your family member, far away from your school, far away from your education, how does it feel? We really special thanks to all councillors, especially the mayor that passed our deputation to, uh, through City of Charleston, and we have a lot of support from local member, uh, federal member, and local member from parliament. And this is what we, what we're aiming for, and this is what we want, our two Vietnamese boys back to, Adelaide, back to Woodville High School. I'm so proud of our governing council because last Wednesday, um, there was a motion uh, that was passed unanimously by the parent governing body to say that um, they give the discretion to the school leadership to, um, enrol, uh, continue the enrolments of people once they're 18 and that the school will absorb the costs. Uh, a few days ago, Brian Dorr, a past scholar and also political satirist, he came to our school to speak and um, really express his views on the whole issue of Too Too Many and um, to get his support is just really good. Um, it's just really amazing to see like we're getting support from not just people around our community but like past scholars, all this kind of stuff is really good. So from now, like, our main goal is one or two Vietnamese boys back to Woodville High School. And we want more people to, to sign our online petition. Especially we want more people and we want all the media to cover about this new. And we want especially to change the asylum seekers policy. So as the next step, uh, we as a school community have decided to write letters to the immigration department. And uh, we're expecting thousands to write to the immigration department to let them know like how we're feeling and hopefully that gets more attention and yeah hopefully that goes well. So I found out um, seven schools including ours that had a number of community detention students and the previous principal of Woodville High School who's the principal of Norwood Mariauta, Panahula Paha um, said, right, we're going to do something about this. And so during the holidays, we met and we came up with some protocols that would assist us in better supporting young people and in community detention. So those things that we have all agreed, that every student in community detention will have a, a letter signed by the principal on school letterhead saying at the date of enrolment, this is the birth date given, this is a legal document, this makes this student this age. Um, the other is that we believe that every young person on community detention, in addition to their migration agent lawyers, need to have an independent lawyer. And so that's what we're working on at the moment. We need to know what's happening to them far sooner. What I'd say to the government is like, we are the public. And we are the ones who give you the mandate. We are the ones who vote you in power. We have a voice and we know how to use that voice. So what you have to understand is that this is something that affects a lot of us, right? So this is something that we want you to hear, that we would like you to bring the boys back home. And we're not going to stop until the boys are back home. As you can see, like, this is going across nationally. You know, everyone knows about it. I'd say that in my personal opinion, I don't think what you've done is right. And I know that at least 13,000 people don't think what you've done is right. I have one question to ask, especially Prime Minister, Mr. Tony Albert. I want to ask, what is your policy about asylum seekers? 
don't you think about our next generation? They are our next generation. They are our children. So why don't you think of them? So you think that you stay here to use the power, to use your power as your prime minister to do this stuff. I do not think what the government did is fair. I felt that the two students were singled out. You know, it was a human rights violation. But at the end of the day, we're trying to side with you. We're trying to be your friends. We are the public speaking out to the government. The people who are supposed to be here to protect us and care for us and cater for our needs are suddenly doing the exact opposite to our friends and our peers and our schoolmates. And I would just like to say that I don't think double standards is what we are looking for as a public to see in our government, you know. We really need to start treating everyone with respect and dignity, not just those that have the paperwork for it. I guess I would have hoped that there'd be some compassion shown by the government for these scared young men. Sadly, they're now regarded as criminals because they ran away from the detention centre. And I would, I would seek compassion from the Minister for Immigration and Border Protection if they really want the young men to come back in. There's some gesture of compassion. They need to come back to Woodville High School. You know, it's not just about policy. Some people who aren't, don't support our movement say, um, oh yeah, but look, just because you like them doesn't give them any more rights. Well, because you, you know them and like them, it makes you realise we're dealing with human beings, not just government policies. And for me, the best interest, if, he, if the minister wants to talk about that, the best interest is about having these bright, loyal, future citizens as a part of Australian society. We have so many young people, young Vietnamese um, Australian students who are the, the children of boat people or the children of people who made the move from Vietnam so that their, their children could have a better life. I'd say to the government that um, Woodville High School really loves these students and that we really want them back. and ask them to give us reasons behind why they're doing this? They then attended, uh, they were allowed to attend e afternoon and evening um, lessons from the beginning of our school term um, at a school on the outskirts of Darwin called um, Sanderson Middle School. They would go by bus for the hour trip from Wickham Point Detention Centre and they would do lessons until about six o'clock and then return. So they did that quite, uh, you know, uh, right from the beginning of the term. And then um, I heard uh, from the Darwin Asylum Seeker Support Network, they were really concerned that um, was not leaving his room. He was distressed and withdrawn. And um, that was because he'd been told that he was not allowed to attend school anymore because another uh, inmate, because is, that is like a jail, um, had said he was planning to run away. Um, Father Peter Juan, um, a Catholic uh, priest, managed to um, convince the Circo guards uh, to allow him to go uh, to school. He and made that decision to run from that school um, on Wednesday of our week three, trying to think what, it's about the 30th of, um, of, of uh, July. So they, they ran into the community. None of our contacts or networks know where they are. Um, and we are desperately worried because we don't know who's helping them or what the motives are for helping them. I realised that um, we'd managed to make a difference because it was the school principal and teachers making a stand and giving voice to these young people. If I was able to have contact with the boys now, I'd first obviously introduce myself because I didn't know them personally. For me, if I have a chance to talk to them, I will ask them to just stay calm and especially eat healthy, eat well over there, don't think too much. I would say that to stay strong, to keep hope because we are all here for them and you know supporting them all the way and if they knew how much support they were getting they'd probably be really overwhelmed as well as much as we are. Um, and I'd tell them to have hope and to trust that 
we are looking out for you and we are standing out for you. You know, you have no idea the kind of support that you're getting at home for people who have no idea who you are, you know. I'd say that um, there's thousands of people having their support behind them. Yeah, so they've got thousands of supporters and we're going to make sure they get back to Woodville High School. My first, the first words I would say to them is, hello, my name is Kevin and I'm sorry I didn't help you on the day that you were taking. I think Kevin Chung said, said it so well, um, and he nearly cries every time he says this, and that is, I'm sorry that we weren't there for you, uh, and that we are doing as much as we can. I would tell the two students to stay strong. You know, uh, there are a lot of people out there who have heard your story, and we actually will not stop until we get both of you back into our communities where you belong. We're here, to, we're here to support them. We're here to support them every single thing. So just be calm and don't do anything that's against the law. We're here to support you. And no matter what it happened, we never let you go. I think have hope and be safe um, because we are looking out for you and we really do care about you. The viewers, thank you for supporting us and thank you for attending our rally, signing the petition and showing that you care. Viewers, we are just so overwhelmed with all the amount of support. We're just so thankful for everyone who's supported us every step of the way. The community, um, teachers, students, parents, everyone. It's just so great to see. I would say thank you so much for all of your support. It really means the world to all of us, to the people who are still here in community detention in our school, to the 13,000 people who have signed our petition so far and that's just you know a really recent count I don't know how many it will be when this gets released just thank you thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts you don't I don't think you understand the kind of impact that just one person's voice has thank you for supporting us thank you for supporting the you know, the humanity. Thank you for having a heart, <laughs> I suppose. You know, thank you for fighting for, you know, the people around you. Thank you for fighting for your community and your friends. So I would like to say thank you to everyone that support us and we want more support rather than this. And we would like to say thank you to everyone that support our campaign. And especially we want everyone to, sh to share about this campaign. And especially when you post an anything that about asylum seekers, don't forget to hashtag us, hashtag too too many. I would like to congratulate the, or everyone who's supporting us, as well as thank you. Just thank you to everyone who's put their support behind this. It's been amazing and we never expected this much. I'm so proud of the Woodville High School community. Um, I said at a, uh, an assembly this morning that, um, that m people can come across a Rosa Parks moment and Rosa Parks was a person in the 50s um, who on just one little incident about segregated bus seats and refusing to give up her seat in the black American section um, and then made a stand and got to know Martin Luther King. That act of injustice has create, created strong social activists. I'm so proud of our students and these filmmakers um, because this is, your film is an act of social protest. And Woodville High, this would have to be one of the most significant things in the history of Woodville High School, as our past scholar, the political sat satirist Brian Dawe said. He can't believe it, that it's young people showing adults how to lead in a moral, for a morally just society. <laughs> <laughs>